Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing fine. Today's video is a special video where I share some insights regarding how data science with respect to research is different as compared to data science when you work in an organization. So without wasting any further time, let's kick start the video. Well, if you're watching this video, then I'm assuming that you're pretty active on social media platforms such as LinkedIn and Twitter. There are a lot of tweets, there are a lot of posts regarding the various large language models that are being open sourced. Benchmark after benchmark has been beaten by open source models. Well, there's one thing that I wanted to highlight here. There's a stark difference between the data science for researchers or machine learning for researchers and what the industry expects out of you. The first and foremost piece that I want to highlight is about data quality. What do I mean by data quality? Well, I'll explain it as we go forward. So there are a lot of people who have completed their masters, they're doing PhD, there are tons of researchers in research labs and companies like Google, Facebook, etc. They are kind of pushing the boundary of research and they're creating state of the art models be it in the field of natural language processing or computer vision. Now, if you've noticed a research paper that claims to beat benchmarks, it is often on specific data sets. So if you look at any research paper and if you find that this particular model, say a large language model is beating the benchmark, the benchmark is decided on a data set which is primarily clean or which is like a known data set. When you jump to the industry side or the corporate or the organization side, data is never clean. Now, when you start working in companies, not as a research role, but as someone who wants to implement all of the research that's happening, one of the challenges that every data scientist or a machine learning engineer faces is the data quality. The data is, to be very honest, in a very pathetic state. You will have missing values all around. If you are doing a simple sentiment analysis task as well, one of the challenges that you face in India or any other country is the presence of regional languages. So a lot of text embedding models are specifically curated for English. I'm not saying there are no embeddings available for languages such as French, German, Hindi, etc. But you have different variety of say text that comes into reviews as well for different platforms and for different geographies. Cleaning takes up almost 70 to 80 percent of the time of a data scientist or a machine learning engineer when he or she starts working in an organization. This is one major difference that you have to keep in mind when you start working or when you start using the so-called state of the art models into your approach or your organization. So this is one major difference in terms of the data quality that a researcher gets and what an actual practitioner in the organization gets. The second piece of difference that I want to highlight between a researcher working on say predefined data sets and an actual practitioner working on real data sets in organizations is the level of complexity of models that can be built. So for a researcher, it's more than okay or more than accepted to create something that's very complex in nature. The task of a researcher is to create something that is state of the art, which is where he can create something that's very, very complex. So think of his basic objective, he has to publish papers, he has to basically get his PhD done as well. So which is where complexity is like a given thing for a researcher because that is what he wants to achieve out of the entire process. But when you think of an actual practitioner in an organization, uh, creating complex models is good, but technically what he would give more weightage to is simpler models. Now look at the use cases for a practitioner. He can create a really complex model, which is giving him, say, an accuracy of around 93%. And if he's created a simpler, say, model, which is giving him around 87%, but it has good model interpretability baked into the model itself. Now, the obvious choice for the practitioner is to go for the simpler model. That is the second model as opposed to the first model. The reason is fairly simple. He has to explain how this model works to business. Business won't understand complex terms and complex models. They would rather prefer a simpler model so that they are able to understand how this particular model is working and then fine tune their activities based on the model recommendations. So this is one major difference that comes about when you think about how a researcher would go about solving a problem as opposed to how a practitioner would go about solving the same problem in the industry. 
The third point of difference that is like a major difference is driving innovation versus driving growth. So a researcher is responsible for pushing the limits of the existing state of the art models and coming up with something that is much more better as compared to the current state of the art. The researcher is given much more importance when he is kind of pushing the envelope and creating something that is beating the benchmarks. So innovation is what drives a researcher's progress. But when you think of a practitioner in the organization, he is not worried about the state of art model usage. What he is more interested in is how is this particular model impacting business. Is this driving growth or is this particular model helping the company in either bottom line or top line progress? That is, is this particular model helping in gaining more sales or improving margins? So this is how organizations would really prefer practitioners that have made a significant business impact as compared to research impact. Again, it all depends on the kind of role that you're kind of hiring for. But if I consider that there are 5% companies that are research oriented and there are 95% companies in the data science domain that want to create solutions that have a positive business impact, then companies would prefer people who are making an impact in terms of the solutions that they are creating and thus driving incremental sales, say better margins for the products that they are kind of selling and the other factors that come into picture. So, one of the key skills that an application oriented practitioner should remember is whatever solution you create, be it using a simple model or a complex model, how much of an impact is it driving is something that you should remember. But for a researcher, I think innovation is the key to success. The other piece that differentiate researchers with actual practitioners is the ability to move in an agile fashion. So when I say agile, I'm not talking about the agile sprints that happen in organizations as well, but the usability of models is where the agility comes in. So for a researcher, he will try different models. If something works for him, he'll kind of continue researching on that piece. But if it doesn't, he'll kind of chuck that particular model and move to the next model that he feels will kind of deliver more innovative solutions and beat benchmarks. When you consider an application engineer or a practitioner in the industry, there will be a good sense of reluctance to move from say model A to model B in a short duration of time. Why? Because there's a lot of effort that's gone in creating model A using the data cleaning process, the data preparation process, the modeling aspect of it. And then once the model is clear, once the model is validated, once the model is being used by business, and it's not easy for business to change the entire model and use something new, say fairly quickly. So adoption in the industry takes time as compared to adoption in research. So this is also one piece of difference in terms of how research operates as, a, as opposed to your industry. So well, this is something that I wanted to discuss with all of you today. I know a lot of you go through this feeling of fear of missing out, uh, looking at the research that's happening. But what I would encourage all of you to do is to understand what value you're driving in business for your current organization if you're a practitioner. And for all the researchers who are watching this video, keep up the good work, keep up with all the research that you're doing so that we practitioners can kind of utilize it and create some amazing industry-wide applications. So this is all that I had in today's video. I hope you enjoyed this small conversation-like video that I created. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you.